good morning, good morning. We have a full house, but we're gonna go ahead um, and get started here. Thank you for joining us. We are overflowing and it is a wonderful thing um, to see. So good morning and welcome to our dedication celebration. It's my pleasure to welcome each of you and thank you for taking some time out of your day to pause, reflect, and celebrate this beautiful community. I'm Chandler Hulke, campus administrator here at Marvella. It is a blessing to be here today representing Marvella and Presbyterian Homes and Services. I've been with PHS for the last five years, but this has been a first for me in opening a brand new community. But what a community to bring to life. It truly is marvelous. With great Thanksgiving, we welcomed our first residents on Friday, November 25th. It's hard to believe that seven months has gone by as so much has happened and it hasn't taken long for it to feel like a family here. Today, we stand 258 residents strong across our three value streams, but still, still continuing to grow by the week. I want to acknowledge a couple of specific groups of people today. To the QST leadership team, will you please rise or wave? Thank you for saying yes to this adventure last fall. Many of them saying yes before knowing all of the details of what would be ahead of them. Each of these leaders has been courageous, flexible, and extremely adaptable, and for that I am grateful. Again, thank you for your dedication and answering the call to serve our ministry. Our team at Marvella is now 63 people strong, and for our other team members that are present, please rise or wave so we can say thank you for your dedication and being able to fill our services in this beautiful space. Next, to all the lovely people who have come to call Marvella home. Thank you for your faith in this community, for your patience along the way, and, and for your role in bringing this community to life over the last seven months. It warms my heart to see the connections that have been made, to see the life enrichment calendar growing, the groups forming, common interests being shared, and to hear all the conversation and laughter coming from the bistro, the dining room, and the club lounge at all hours of the day. It's priceless in what living life in a community is all about. We're reminded further in the book of Matthew, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Again, this community is what it is as a result of the many people in this room, and I'd like to highlight a few of them that you'll be hearing from later on. Thanks to each of you for your role you have played in developing not only this beautiful building, but a place where a community will flourish for many years to come. Today we have present Mayor Melvin Carter, Chris Tolbert, council member, Mike Ryan, president of Ryan Companies, Lisa Albin, Senior Development Manager of Senior Housing Partners, and Maya Tweet, Campus Pastor at Marvella. Finally, a quick housekeeping announcement that we'll be hosting the ribbon cutting um, ceremony and pictures on the amenity deck. Following the program, we invite residents to join us for a picture. Following pictures, if you're interested in seeing our model apartments, check in at the front desk with Michelle and our lovely housing advisors will give you a tour. And with that, I'd like to welcome Mayor Melvin Carter for a few remarks. Good morning. How excited it is, how exciting it is to be here this morning. Uh, this is really cool. We've been looking forward to this for quite some time. I got a chance to walk through this space, what, just a few weeks ago or so, uh, and was just blown away uh, by the high ceilings, by uh, the wide hallways, by the fireplaces, by the space. This is incredible. I mean, this is such incredible space. Um, I actually already uh, submitted my application for the waiting list. So. <laughs> Whoever's in charge of that, please. No special treatment, but it's me. I'm Melvin Carter, and I'm the mayor of this city, and I am just so pleased to be the mayor of this city. This is a city with an enormous amount of opportunity, with an enormous amount of potential, and with an enormous amount of uh, momentum on our side. We also have challenges, and let me tell you, every day, I use this space where we're at right now as an example of how we can face our challenges. Um, just before I decided that I wanted to run for city council some 15 years ago, we got what felt like the worst news in the world. And that is that Ford was gonna close the plant that had, had provided 
hundreds and thousands of jobs in our city for all of our lifetimes. It felt like a blow to the gut. And let me tell you, there are many of us in City Hall when we got that news who looked and said, I don't know how, how, what the future can look like. And, you know, city leaders smarter than myself did a whole lot of work to do everything we could to hold off that news, to hold off, to go visit Ford and, you know, th those types of things. Uh, my predecessor, uh, Mayor Chris Coleman, uh, did a lot of that work. Uh, Councilmember Tolbert's here. His predecessor, Pat Harris, did a lot of that work as well. Uh, and they ended up closing. And in just a relatively short of time, a period of time, we in this city went from, oh my gosh, how can we live without what was here before? So, oh my goodness, how did we ever live without what we've got here now? How did we ever live without this incredible uh, vision, this incredible future that we're building right here in Highland Bridge? This is exciting, isn't it? Yeah. And what's cool is that it's not just this building. I, I don't know how many times, I'm sort of a city nerd. I go to cities and I always look around and see how they planned their city and how what city hall looks like and things like that. And, and, and people always say, you know what, listen, if, if we got the chance to plan this community based on everything we know now, we wouldn't do it this way. We get to plan this community based on everything we know now. And that's why this is becoming very quickly one of maybe the most uh, desired community probably in the upper Midwest. I'm excited to be able to be here. I'm excited to be here and, and be a part of this with you. And I'm appreciative of all the partners. I know we have Ryan Company here. We thank you for being a part, an incredible partner uh, in this work. Uh, would all of the city employees who had a hand in this just wave your hand so we can clap for you like we are crazy? Clap like crazy for They're usually off doing, actually doing something while I'm talking uh, at a podium. But we definitely appreciate you. Uh, Presbyterian Homes, it's great to have a partner like you to be able to kind of enliven a space with the vision and the way that you have. Uh, and all of the workers who work here at Marvella, we really appreciate you. Uh, it's taken an enormous vision, an enormous team to make this work happen. I already sort of acknowledge, but I want to make sure that I acknowledge. I get to do a lot of ribbon cuttings in my work, and a lot of that, you know, these projects take forever to put together, uh, and a lot of that is due to the hard work of my predecessor, Chris Coleman, of Councilmember Tolbert's predecessor, Pat Harris, and I also want to say that as a mayor, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that comes in front of you and, you know, having good partners is absolutely critical. Um, and you are also going to hear, and I, I think he's coming next, and that is our St. Paul City Council member for this area, uh, Chris Tolbert. If you live here, he's your city council member. And let me tell you, you're very well served in your city council member because he is one who from day one, probably every day of his time on the city council, uh, I, I would doubt a day has gone by when he's not thought about uh, how do we deliver the absolute best best future we possibly can for this Highland Bridge site. Uh, so please give our city council member Chris Tolbert a round of applause as well. Well, thank you, Mayor. And uh, for those of you who weren't living in the neighborhood prior to living here, welcome. Welcome to Highland Park. Welcome to Highland Bridge. We're so happy to have you in St. Paul. Um, as the mayor mentioned, it is truly exciting. Um, back in 2011, when this was still an auto manufacturing plant, I'm sure many people in here remember seeing it. Maybe some people worked at it, um, but it was a staple of our neighborhood. In just these short years, 12 short years, we've gone from having an auto manufacturing plant to having people live on this site in a building that's beautiful, and that is just absolutely exciting. That's what we envisioned throughout. Um, and as many people here know, I talked to a few people um, that moved here um, from other places because there, many have grandkids close. I've talked to some people who have downsized to here from the neighborhood. And that's exactly what we talked about when we talked about the senior housing here. When I took office back in 2012, we didn't have a lot of senior housing options. And that was one of the things I heard at the doors. That's one of the things I heard from a lot of people of, I have to go to Egan to live in senior housing. I have to go to Vadness Heights or Bloomington. And we didn't want that. We want people here. We want you here because you're still con you're contributing to our neighborhood. 
This is the place where you've lived. This is the place where you want to continue to live. And this is a place where you might have kids or grandkids that you want to stay close to. And so that's what's so exciting about this. It's great to see um, the diversity of housing being built. It's great to see a, a building this fancy. I, I joke with the mayor that in, in when we're when we qualify for age-wise, we're going to be living here uh, complaining about the current city government, probably. Um, <laughs> writing letters about back in our day. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just exciting because I know to have a location like this, to have a place where I can stay in the neighborhood, the neighborhood that I was raised in, the neighborhood I live in, and the neighborhood I hope to age in, um, it's, it's exciting to have this. So welcome to the neighborhood. For those of you that are here, thank you for staying. Uh, and uh, super excited. I hope you're enjoying the amenities and all the parks and, and everything there. Um, we're lucky to have it built by such great contractors, such great developers like Ryan Companies to build a building of this caliber um, is, is just amazing. It's because they're a great union shop. They have great developers, and I know all the partners that they've used along the way. So thank you. Um, and I get the great honor of introducing Mike Ryan, um, the head of Ryan Companies. Thank you. There are a bunch of people in the back of the room that snickered when you said the head of Ryan Companies, because I have a lot of bosses over there, and many in this room know it. Um, but thank you all. It's great to be here. Mike Ryan with Ryan Companies. We're a family business. We've been around 85 years uh, from Minnesota and uh, love St. Paul. I have aunts and uncles all in this neighborhood that have been uh, bugging me about what these buildings will ultimately look like, be like, feel like, be surrounded by. So it's nice to be here, as the council member said, celebrating. It's the first time we've actually celebrated people living here. Uh, we've done a lot of ribbon cuttings and ground breakings, but it hasn't actually been with a lot of new residents. So it's special to be here. Um, I'm gonna first address uh, Presbyterian Homes as our client here for the project. You all, um, made this project you give us all the energy we need to do you know to move heaven and earth to build this building it has been a fabulous privilege to get to know you we're in the business of building lasting relationships and long-term ones it's our first project together and it has created multiple more projects so that's the beauty of doing something like this that we can create a relationship and and continue to go on you challenge us to be a better version of ourselves and i i hope you feel like we rose to the occasion um, you pulled us in great directions on this project and I'll just say personally, it's a, it's a privilege to work for a faith-based organization and have that be part of the process. And so thank you for gifting that to our organization. I, uh, I, most of my team got text messages this morning about their most uh, precious memories and fun facts about this project. So I'm gonna share a few of those with you all today. Um, first is mine. We've been a part of 33 um, senior living communities at Ryan Companies. Uh, we're part owners in many of them. I have no qualms saying this is my favorite. For me, there's a couple of things that lead to that, but the intergenerational connection that this site promises, it, this is not a standalone senior community where you go live in a parking lot in an isolated place. You have to be part of a community, and it's just pretty rare that you have that at such a high level, and I think nothing speaks better that, to that than the kayaks in the bike room. You just, that is a first for me on any communities we've worked on. Uh, the, the traditional architecture, uh, you know, it's probably quasi-Italianate architecture. Mayor talked about it. Uh, it's, I think it's absolutely charming. Council member, I can't remember the term you used. N it was like neat or, you know, something like that. It's, I think it's charming. Uh, the, and I think you only get that with a great customer. Um, so thank you again, uh, Presbyterian Homes, uh, for leading the way in that regard. It's really special. Uh, it's also exactly what we promised the neighborhood when we had countless meetings over the course of uh, 2019, 2020, 2021. Anyone part of any of those meetings? There's a few. We were, Tony was, we were very fearful of tomatoes being thrown our way many times. And I'm proud to stand here and, and feel like we delivered on, on a big promise. Um, the buildings were designed during COVID. I, I've already forgotten that. But the team virtually, um, they, they rarely met together. In, in person, and they did most of the design work over the computer, um, which I just think speaks for itself. Um, so that was an interesting piece. The, the sustainability features, a lot of our team members are very proud of this, and again, that takes a great customer patron to really drive that outcome. Um, we set much of that in motion at the city level, 
and with the, the vision of the site, but that is a special feature for all of us. Um, the next one is uh, someone reminded me that Tony owes me $20. And I'd like to be paid before we leave today because he's not paid me. <laughs> this was not staged. I can't believe he actually has the cash. Um, Tony bet against himself that he would get the Skyway approved uh, here for the project. And the Skyway was, you know, it's an important element for a community like this to thrive, especially in the winter months. And I think we believe that, um, you know, Skyways are not beloved by city planners and many architects because they do, they can create negative consequences for cities. But in this case, it was absolutely the right thing to do. And um, thank you, city, for coming with us on that. 120,000 pound Skyway that was uh, pretty much built on the ground and installed on a Saturday morning. I don't see Kirk, he's hiding in the back. He was in charge of that. But I think it was a Saturday morning. Pete, was it a Saturday? About 15 minutes? Yep, it was quick. Uh, a lot of planning and work with zero tolerance. That was pretty cool. Uh, here's one that I found fascinating. It just speaks to the humanness of, of projects like this and endeavoring to do this. Five, uh, six babies across the project team of probably 30 people were born during this project. So they, it's a bit of a club whether you did or didn't have a baby on this project. Five at Ryan, I think one at, at Press Homes. Um, and we actually hosted an on-site in-job trailer baby shower, which <laughs> may have been the first that we've done. Uh, we're not sure about that. Uh, the teamwork, this is a serious one. If you've been to any groundbreakings that we do, we usually have a moment of silence and pray for the safety of the team members working on the building. Uh, we had over 1,000 people participate in this construction. Pretty, I mean, pretty amazing when you think of what a thousand faces might look like. Uh, working together is about 50 different companies. At the peak performance or peak uh, volume is about 275 people a day working on building this building, and that lasted for, of course, months. We didn't have one lost time accidents. That's our metric. So I'd just like a round of applause for that fabulous performance. <laughs> Fun fact: one of the best constructs we created with the whole Ford site. Uh, Highland Bridge development is that the projects that are paying taxes here fund the affordable projects that may happen next door. And that is an enormous, um, I think that's one of the most brilliant things that we were able to craft with the city's leadership here. So three projects, about 200 units, are the beneficiaries uh, in part, not the complete beneficiaries, but of this project. And that is, I think, a fabulous uh, symbiotic relationship in a community to create. So. Um, Great work to the city for that. Those three projects are under construction now. Uh, 100 full-time jobs. You know, there's 400 families that'll be part of this residence, but 100 full-time jobs are a different part of that uh, equation. And, and I think people forget senior communities um, create purpose and dignity for people that are working in them. And I just, I love that factor. Um, our team is very cautious of me sharing with you. So I'll just say when all the auditing is done, we think we set some very aggressive um, women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, and small business participation goals. I think when all the audits are done, we will exceed all of those. 25% collectively was the goal. That's a major accomplishment, so I'm very proud of the team for that. OK, I'm going to wrap up. I just have 15 more. Uh, we got <laughs> this one is very special. Morgan Fredrickson, you in the room? She's going to be very embarrassed about this. Morgan. Uh, was the senior project manager on the project. She was named um, the top woman in construction in Minnesota last year for her leadership on this project. That's a pretty amazing accomplishment. So hope, hopefully you all enjoyed just some of the more human elements of um, pulling a project like this off. Um, I'm proud to say we were ahead of schedule and, um, and on budget. Uh, hopefully Press Homes feels the same way. Yes, I got a nod. Uh, good. The, um, this is the third and fourth project at Highland Bridge in, in my view. Of course, the Lunds apartment building uh, being the first, the medical office building, the second, these two, and then we have three affordable projects underway. So um, those are you know, the first, and then of course the row homes that you all saw out front. Uh, those are the first of what ultimately are 42 blocks out here that we intend to build together. And we have work to do. You know, We created an incredible partnership to bring this walkable, sustainable, mixed income, dynamic community together. And we have a speed bump in front of us in rent control. 
and we need to all band together and figure out a solution to get the rest of those 42 blocks coming. So we are committed to that. You will see us leading the charge in that. The city is, is part of that equation with us, um, and we just cannot wait to be out here uh, seeing this building totally full of people and all of your great neighbors here using those kayaks and uh, doing exactly what we all envision. So thank you, Press Homes, for letting us be a part of this. Thank you to the city for helping us uh, dream big here. And I will hand it off to the leader of the project from um, uh, the Presbyterian Homes side of the equation, Senior Housing Partners, uh, Lisa Albain. Lisa? Well, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I was, I was thinking back to all of our resident meetings that we had, gosh, almost a year ago now. And can you believe it's actually here and you've moved in and you know your neighbors and we're not at the golf course, we're in your chapel in your community room. I think it's just amazing. Well, I wanna thank Mayor Carter and um, um, Chris Tolbertson, right? Tolbert, sorry and Mike and the rest of the people that are here from the city, from Ryan Companies, um, and just family and friends that are here on this amazing day as we celebrate um, the completion of Marvella. It's a remarkable achievement that's been born out of collaboration, shared vision, unwavering dedication, and fortitude. Marvella stands as a testament to the remarkable power of what happens when people come together and, de and decide to focus on one goal to accomplish something monumental. As we embark on this momentous occasion, let us draw inspiration from the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Marbella is more than just a physical structure. It's a symbol of new beginnings, personal stories, and the pursuit of fulfilling lives. Today, we celebrate the courage to embrace the unknown and create a, ha a haven where our residents can truly live their story. The journey to bring Marvella to life involved the collaboration of numerous organizations, each contributing their expertise, unwavering commitment during a very difficult time in history. Throughout the entitlement, underwriting, design, and construction, the Marvella team navigated through a pandemic material shortages, supply chain challenges, labor shortages, infection control policies, and yes, remote work, which was challenging for some more than others to figure out Zoom. I would say that our team gets an A plus, if you could give them all a round of applause. We extend our heartfelt appreciation to all of those who have played a part in this extraordinary endeavor. So to begin with, we recognize the City of St. Paul in the Planning and Economic Development, the Housing and Redevelopment Authority, and the Highland District Council for their support and guidance throughout the development of Marvella. Their dedication to, pr to promoting vibrant communities has been instrumental in transforming our dreams into reality. We express our gratitude to the Capital Region Watershed District and the Metropolitan Council for their expertise in ensuring that Marvella was built with environmental consciousness, preserving our natural resources for generations to come. We acknowledge our financial partners that have shown unwavering belief in this project. I remember the first phone call to Piper um, Sandler was like, do you think we could do a bank deal on this? John and I were just shooting for the moon and it's like, well, let's see what we can do. So as a result of that courageous step, um, I'm just going to read off the number of lenders that were involved in this process. So take a deep breath because there's a lot of them. Uh, UMB Bank, Associated Bank, Choice Bank, Minnesota Bank and Trust, Sunrise Banks, Center National Bank, Central State Bank, Citizens Independent Bank, First State Bank and Trust, Highland Bank, and First American Title. Their support and commitment have paid the way for the realization of this extraordinary community. Let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> and I'd like to express our heartfelt gratitude to Ryan Companies, um, who is our partner through the development of the project, the entitlement process, 
architecture, interior design, civil engineering, as well as our outstanding general contractor. This uh, community would not be what it is without your expertise, your commitment to excellence, and the meticulous detail that you brought to this uh, project. We're truly grateful for your dedication and for your craftsmanship. I'd also like to recognize Chandler Hulke and her team, um, her staff, caregivers, and volunteers who now fill these halls with love, care, and compassion every single day. They are the heart and soul of this community, dedicating themselves to providing comfort and support to our residents who live here. Let's give them a round of applause too. And finally, I'd like to recognize um, the teams, senior housing partners teams with marketing, finance, and development, Presbyterian Homes and Services corporate teams, and Senior Lifestyle Design, our interior design firm that designed all these beautiful spaces for you. Um, put the lipstick on it, I like to say. Um, it's just absolutely stunning. Um, these teams worked diligently to ensure that our Presbyterian home standards of excellence were captured in all of the details. This legacy of excellence began in 1953 when Presbyterian Homes of Minnesota was incorporated under the leadership of Dr. Irving A. West as its first board president. In 1955, the first senior residence, a home for retired ministers and their wives, was built by Presbyterian Homes on 20 acres of donated land um, in Arden Hills, now known as Johanna Shores. Since then, Presbyterian Homes and Services has been an innovative leader dedicated to promoting independence, purposeful living, and overall well-being for those we serve. We've spent the last 70 years dedicated to understanding the unique needs of our elderly population, and it was with that wisdom and knowledge that guided every aspect of the creation of Marvella. Today we stand in awe of the collective effort, shared vision, and collaborative spirit that have brought Marvella to fruition. It's a place where love, compassion, and respect will flourish, providing a nurturing home for our residents, family members, staff, and volunteers. In closing, let's remember the essence of Marvella, which is live your story. It's a reminder that within these walls, every resident has the opportunity to create new chapters filled with joy, with purpose, and opportunity. As we embark on this new chapter together, let's embrace the spirit of unity and collaboration, knowing that when we join forces, we can re accomplish remarkable things. As Maya Angelou wisely said, the ache for home lives in all of us, the safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. May Marvella be that safe place, a loving home where our residents can truly live their unique stories. May Marvella be a place of joy, of comfort and fulfillment for all who reside here within her walls. May it be a sanctuary where the spirit of compassion and love thrive. And thank you once again to all who have contributed to this remarkable endeavor. Your dedication, support, and unwavering belief in Marvella will forever be etched in its legacy. Like and now I'd like to invite Pastor Maya Tweet to come and share the blessing. Good morning. We stand here in this beautiful place on this beautiful day, and we acknowledge that we are humbly positioned in a long arc of many generations and peoples who have come before us. We offer gratitude to this land, to this vision, and to God. And so we pause in this moment of time, this precious moment, what poet Mary Oliver calls our one wild and precious life, and receive the blessing of God. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, 
Bless the architects and the artists, the construction workers and the community who have dreamed Marvella into being. God bless our compassionate, committed staff from this day forward who give their hands and feet in service to the lives of Marvella residents. God bless our bold Marvella residents who have opened their lives to God's leading to embrace a time of change and transition. And we join them as they step deeper into their lives. Bless us as community that we grow together, that we love together, that we respect each other, our multifaceted stories, our diverse faith and beliefs, knowing that we share in the hope of this peace that passes all understanding, that keeps our hearts and minds united in this Christ love and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And now just one final um, announcement. In a moment, we'll prepare for our ribbon cutting ceremony. And so we invite our residents to go onto the amenity deck here for a photo. It might take just a bit for the photographers to arrive. And we invite Marvella partners out um, to the front of Marvella for a quick photo. Thank you all of you who have gathered here this day.